Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Bryce with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conco, New York. We're doing Unit 2, Lesson 6, Inverse Functions from Common Core Algebra 2, the non-Regents version. And there is the QR code. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you can listen to the genius that wrote these worksheets. Okay, there are many ideas of inverses or opposites. It's very important in mathematics. For instance, when you tie your shoe, you want to untie it. They are inverses. In fact, it's so important that, in fact, the word is used in many different contexts, including the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse of a number. The actions of certain functions can be reversed as well. The rules governing the reversal of themselves can be functions, but not always functions. Uh, consider the two linear functions by giving the formula f of x equals 3x plus 7 all over 2 and g of x equals 2x minus 7 all over 3. Hmm, interesting. So calculate uh, f of 5, the function value at 5, and uh, g's function value at 11. Well, I don't think so. Really? Let's grab a calculator. What I am going to do is I am going to place f of x into y1 and g of x into y2. So let me see, is there a fraction key? If I hit math, right arrow to number, and then instead of scrolling down through all these, I just up arrow, and there's numerator and denominator, and choice C is in case I have a number in front, a number in front of fraction. There. So now I'm just going to put uh, 3x plus 7, hit the down arrow, I'm at the denominator, 2, that was F. Hit enter, hit to math, right arrow to number, up arrow to turn into a fraction, hit enter, 2x minus 7, get to the denominator by hitting a down arrow, and then 3. There we go. Now, we see that it wants to evaluate them at, uh, calculate f of 5, the function value at 5. Remember, the function value is, so I'm just going to write a little note down here, that f is really in y1, and g is really in y2. Second table. Change my scale here. I went to table start. I'm going to start the table at just 1, and I'm going to do the delta table as 1 also. Now, let's go to the table. Function value at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I said 5. It's 11. Hmm. F of 5 equals 11. Now, what's G? G of 11. So we have to go down to 11. G's function value at 11 is 5. Hmm. How about that? Calculate uh, function value at 0. Function value at 0. It's seven halves. Now, we don't have seven halves. So, we can pull up the calculator. We don't have seven halves here. I go to second, table set, start. Start at seven divided by two. Go to the table. There it is, zero. Pretty cool. Do you see a pattern here? Hmm, yeah, yeah, okay. Do you think you know what uh, f, the function value of f of g of negative 1 is? Let's take a look. We have to evaluate negative 1 first. Now, this is why I wrote down a little labeling here, because g is there, negative 3. Then, It's the same as the function value at negative 3. 
So let's go to the function value at negative 3. F value is the first one, y1. And that's negative 1. Wow, pretty cool. Can we figure out what this one is? It's 5. Without calculating, can we determine the value of this one? It's pi. Are you catching on? The functions f and the functions g are inverses of each other. The two functions seen in exercise one are inverses because they literally undo one another. The general idea of inverses f of x and g of x is shown below. In other words, I'm in Mr. Bryce's room. I go over to Mrs. Buckley's room in the earth science. And then I go from Mrs. Buckley's room back to Mr. Bryce's room. It undoes itself. If the point negative 3, 5 lies in the graph y equals f of x, then which of the following points must lie on its inverses? Okay, key. If negative 3 goes to 5, then 5 has to go to negative 3. That's x, that's y. This is the inverse. There it is, 5, negative 3. Then the inverse, got it? Next page. Hello, hello, hello. The inverse function notation, they have their special notation, their own notation. If a function y equals f of x has an inverse, that inverse represented by that. What is that? That is not an exponent. You have to know what world of mathematics we're living in. If we're talking about inverses, that means the inverse function. Okay. The linear function, f of x equals 2x, uh, sorry, 2 thirds x minus 2, is shown in graph below. Use this graph to, follow, to answer the following questions. Before we go there, what did we learn about mapping? What did we learn about mapping? If this is the function, Then the inverse, you remember that from geometry? Okay, that's the inverse function's point. So we have to evaluate the inverse value of 2 and the inverse value of negative 4. Okay, so we're talking about the inverses. We're talking about the switching the x's and y's from geometry class. I wrote the equation for the inverse while I hit pause for a couple seconds. Now this here, this here says that the y, the y value, the y value for my original function, the what value? The y value for my original function is going to be 2. So I take a horizontal line, and I see where it's 2, right there, the y value. And the x value is 6. So the inverse function from the graph, f of 2 has to equal 6. Now, f of negative 4, uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, has to be that number right there, 1, 2, 3. So f of negative 4 is 3. Got it? So now, if you want to determine what the y-intercept of this function is, the inverse function, the inverse function, we're just going to look for the x-intercept uh, of the original function. And there's the x-intercept, and the x-intercept is 3, comma 0. So uh, the y-intercept is 0, comma 3 or just three, depending on what kind of question it is. Okay, I'll be back after the next class period. The beauty of being able to hit pause and continue the recording later on. Okay, on the same set axis, draw the graph of y equals the inverse of f of x. What? How can I do that? Well, 
I have a point, and I have another point. Connect them, and that makes a line. Two points determine a line. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I plotted two points. Let's get the creative pin and say that uh, 0, 3, and negative 4, negative 3, and I squeeze that little negative sign in there. I don't know if I had that in before. Now let's check the other point that we have here. We have one more point, 2, 6. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, goes right there. And how about that? They do make a line. Graph it. Label it. F inverse of X. And there we go. Done. Here we have a table. Here we want to do the inverse by switching the X's and the Y's. Okay. And it's as simple as that. 4, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Okay. Graph the inverse by switching the order pairs. Graph them on the graph paper. There's the graph. Nice, smooth. Oh, looks like a parabola lying down on the chart. Well, you know, it's about the graph and its inverse. Well, for one thing, um, looks like it rotated, rotated 90 degrees to the right. Um, I don't know, lots of things. If it's not, if the graph isn't one-to-one, -one, then the inverse isn't a function. A function will have an inverse that's also a function if and only if it's one-to-one. -one. Oh, there it is. Hence, a quick way to know if a function has an inverse is also know if its function applies to the horizontal line test, if it's one-to-one. -one. Hey, this has been a long day. Good night. See you in class.